From the major thrills to the quiet escapes, we got all the Animal Kingdom must-dos for you today on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today we're inside what's possibly my favorite park in all of Disney World, Animal Kingdom. I know, I say that for all of them. It is probably Epcot, but we already did the Epcot video for this, so we're gonna talk about Animal Kingdom now. Now, AK might not have as many attractions as the other Disney parks do, but lots of folks don't realize just how much there is to do here. So we're gonna walk you through what you should always do to make sure you get the most out of your AK day. And hopefully you'll be able to build your own Disney itineraries accordingly. First up, you're going to ride Kilimanjaro Safaris early. I love starting off this video with a ride on Kilimanjaro Safaris because it's one of the most unique rides on property where you get to see a whole savanna of animals, real live ones, no shade on the Jungle Cruise or anything. Because Kilimanjaro Safaris is made up of a bunch of animals with free will, that means every time you ride this ride, you're gonna get a new experience. Sometimes you might even have an ostrich standing in your path that pauses the entire attraction for like 20 minutes. Been there, <laughs> done that. But if you want potentially the best ride through for this attraction, try getting in line for it during those early, early morning hours. In the morning, you're gonna see animals out on the safari, very nice and rested up and energetic, and they should be more alert and ready to say hello in whatever language they use. In the afternoon, however, the sun's gonna get to them, much like it gets to us all, and the animals are gonna be way more sluggish and possibly less visible too. Disney does give them areas where they can retreat and kind of get away from all of those safari vehicles. But another great time to visit Kilimanjaro Safaris, when it rains. Many of the animals will either get out and walk around in it or they're huddled together to try and keep dry or some of the baby animals might start splashing in the puddles, which is literally the cutest thing ever. So time your visit right and you'll be able to really get the most out of your safari tour. Now sticking with the animals here in Animal Kingdom, our next tip is to explore the animal trails. This isn't a theme park where you're gonna be relying solely on rides to completely fill your day, since there aren't that many rides here to begin with. So you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of the other parts of this park that are extremely well-themed, interactive, and are gonna help you get your money's worth out of your park ticket purchase. Like the animal walking trails. These are some of my favorite things to do in all of Disney World. There are three different trails you can venture down and around inside this park that'll give you the opportunity to see some unique animals in their Disney crafted habitat. Plus, they're so peaceful. The trails, not necessarily the animals, which can be kind of hard to find in Disney World in general. That's why I love Animal Kingdom. It's just way easier to find places to breathe and take it easy and kind of escape people because to be fair, a lot of folks don't know about these places we're talking about today. But anyway, back to the trails. The Discovery Island trails wrap around the Tree of Life and have several animal exhibits featuring creatures like otters and flamingos and lemurs. The Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail is tucked inside the Africa section, meaning you get to see the African native animals like hippos and gorillas. And the Maharaja Jungle Trek is in Asia, meaning you'll see totally different animals on this trail like tigers, tapirs, and bats. Oh, and let's not forget about the secret walkable area over in the Oasis too, near the front of the park. If you take the left side pathway when you first enter Animal Kingdom, you might find a little kind of alcove where you're gonna run into a hidden rope bridge. What makes this bridge even better though is that once you walk across it, you'll come out onto a rock cave that's directly facing the Tree of Life. This is it, y'all. This is one of the most breathtaking vantage points in all of Animal Kingdom, so don't overlook it when you're hurrying to do everything else on your to-do list, because Animal Kingdom's gonna force you to slow down and take it all in. Okay, time to talk shortcuts. You're gonna walk a lot in Animal Kingdom. I mean, I just literally recommended three walking trails for you to check out. So yeah, you're definitely gonna get your steps in for the day. So let's try to find the park paths around Animal Kingdom that are gonna help save your feet a little bit and are just very chill and way less people-y. Like I said, a lot of people don't know about these things we're gonna tell you about today. First up is the Hidden Dino Land USA Path. A walkway we use pretty frequently in the park is the path between the Dino Institute, the shop at the exit of Dinosaur, and Chester and Hester's Dinosaur Treasures. This one connects from one gift shop to the other, and the path is pretty quiet and bonus points, it even has a fun dinosaur-themed photo op on the Chester and Hester end. The walkway between Africa and Pandora, this path is a classic for us, and yet it never seems to get any more popular, just the way we like it. You'll find the walkway by Festival of the Lion King on the Africa side, or down in the more lush part of Pandora if you're heading to Africa. Head to the right side of Satuli Canteen to find the start of this one. Again, lots of guests head straight to the food and rides and miss this section of Pandora, but 
It's a great way to get out of Pandora instead of circling back to the entrance. And finally, between Asia and Africa. You can enter this path either by Harambe Village in Africa or by Caravan Road in Asia, but no matter which way you choose, this quiet little walking path is almost always empty. There's also a serene little stream and bridge set up partway through. Plus, closer to Caravan Road, there's a hidden seating area, which is the perfect bit of respite during a particularly crowded day. Now, I know we've talked a lot about not so people-y things already, but we're going to continue that and say find the underrated experiences. Again, if you really want to get your money's worth out of your Animal Kingdom Park ticket, you're going to need to know how to fill your day here, your entire day. And that means uncovering the hidden gems that could very well become the best part of your Disney experience. What are some of our favorite hidden gems in this park? I'm so glad you asked. We like to dine inside the Airstream booth at Restaurantosaurus if it's available, just because it's unique and kind of cozy. Track down that towering plant lady, Divine, who tends to roam around the entrance of Animal Kingdom periodically. You can find her times on the My Disney Experience app. Listen to the street mystery scattered throughout the park, like the ever colorful Viva Gaia street band who performs over in Discovery Island. And you can find show times for them on MDE as well. Take the Wildlife Express train over to Rafiki's Planet Watch to pet some cuddly critters in the affection section, or learn how to sketch a cuddly Disney critter during the animation experience while you're in the neighborhood. Or when the weather looks iffy, I love grabbing a drink at the Dawa Bar and watching the rain and people passing by. It's the little things in life, you know, even at a park as big as Animal Kingdom. Now we're going to get into some big time planning for you. Take advantage of early entry. Animal Kingdom has the earliest early entry of them all most of the time. When you stay at a Disney hotel or one of the other eligible Good Neighbor hotels near property, you'll have access to early theme park entry hours, which, say it with me, allows you to enter any of the parks on any day 30 minutes before the general public. I'm sure that we can all say that together by now. We talk about it all the time. But because Animal Kingdom usually closes the earliest out of all four theme parks, typically closing around 6 to 8 p.m., it also opens earlier than the other parks too. So for instance, while the other parks tend to open around 9 a.m., Animal Kingdom opens around 8 a.m. Side note, park hours are always subject to change, so you'll want to check on them via the Disney World website before your trip. And that means you could potentially enter a Disney theme park and get started on your park day as early as 7.30, if your whole crew is willing to get up and around that early, that is. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, have evening plans lined up. Just because Animal Kingdom closes early doesn't mean the fun has to stop for the night. If you still got daylight to kill because the park's going to close, maybe even as early as 6, start thinking ahead and make plans for what you're going to do after you wrap up your day here. You may want to make dinner reservations for one of the Animal Kingdom Lodge restaurants, since that's going to be the closest hotel to you, or catch a movie over at the AMC Theater in Disney Springs. You could head back to your own resort, hit up the pool, or if you're using a park hopper, you could jump over to another park and watch their nighttime spectacular since Animal Kingdom currently doesn't have one. Then again, you can always use this early park closure to your advantage and spend this extra time relaxing and unwinding for the evening back in your hotel room. That way you can recharge, that can recharge yourself and your phones before another full day of park activities somewhere else. Now, if you do happen to be in Animal Kingdom in the evening and it's dark out, it's time to ooh and ah over this park in a completely different way. While there aren't any major nighttime spectaculars at Animal Kingdom, like there are at the other three parks, AK does have a seasonal projection show called Tree of Life Awakenings. This happens in the winter. Animal Kingdom tends to close hours before the other parks do, so during the summer, the park is going to close while the sun is still up, meaning no projection show. But by the time the winter rolls around, Tree of Life Awakenings, truly awakens to give you a little end of night treat before you wrap up your day. Now, along the same lines, you definitely will want to return to Pandora at night too. Now, Pandora, the world of Avatar, always has this certain glow about it thanks to all the bioluminescent plant life and floating mountains, but this place really gets to glowing once the sun goes down. It's like a lava lamp. The lamp's pretty on your desk during the day, but when you flip the lights off, it's groovy. You don't really get to experience this far out transformation during the summer season since the park usually closes before the sun fully sets, but in the winter and spring, you'll be able to spend a few hours in Pandora after night falls to truly experience the other side of this Navi land. Now the good news, there are so many snacks to try in Animal Kingdom. But the bad news, there are so many snacks to try in Animal Kingdom. And yes, you're going to have to narrow down what you actually want to try when it's all said and done. I know none of us have enough stomach space, time, or money to eat it all in Animal Kingdom in one day. So if you're having a real tough time with what to choose, you might want to choose something that more than likely won't be available during your next visit, just to munch on something that's more on the seasonal side of things. 
Limited time treats and drinks pop up around several of the Animal Kingdom quick services and snack kiosks all year long, including specialty beverages at places like Thirsty River Bar and Isle of Java, fancy cupcakes at Creature Comforts and Flame Tree Barbecue, unique pizza slices at Terra Treats, limited time lounge bites at Nomad Lounge, and ice cream sundaes at an end per ice cream truck. We'll let you know on our free DFB newsletter what seasonal snacks we find when we're inside the parks, since we literally have a reporter in the Disney bubble every single day. So if you sign up for our DFB newsletter, you'll be one of the first to know about all the new stuff without having to worry about going out and searching for it all yourself. You'll just get it served to you on a silver platter. Silver platter being your email inbox, of course. Now here's Animal Kingdom Snacks part two, because I can't talk about Animal Kingdom Snacks in just one point, that'd be a disservice. Instead, let's talk about more Animal Kingdom snacks that aren't solely seasonal, but have just recently become DAK favorites of ours. Snack one, the Dole Whip Pineapple Hard Float. This is for those 21 and up. Tamu Tamu Refreshments serves that classic pineapple Dole Whip in a non-classic way by mixing it with Ace Pineapple Craft Cider and making it boozy. The cider is very light and refreshing and pineapple-y, but if you don't want the alcohol, Tamu also has cheaper non-alcoholic Dole Whip floats for you to choose from as well. For those mocktail concoctions, you can pick whether you want to mix your dole with pineapple juice or orange soda. Snack two, barbacoa nachos. Okay, these are new and I hope they stick around for a good long while. The Smiling Crocodile in Discovery Island tends to be a kiosk that flies under the radar most of the time, but now they've got these barbacoa nachos for $10 that come topped with barbacoa beef, queso, lime crema, and pico de gallo, all on a bed of tricolored chips. This snack is definitely shareable and does not skimp on the queso, or the rest of the toppings for that matter, but the queso is the most important to me. It's also worth mentioning that the pico is served in a cup on the side, so if you and or your kids aren't big on pico, you don't have to add it. Or you can ask the cast members to 86 it all together. Snack number three is AJ's birthday fries, french fries with pulled pork and cheese. This is cheating because they aren't technically new, but they are a snack that was pulled from the Flame Tree Barbecue menu for a while before finally returning in October of last year. I know, I went about three and a half years without them and I think we're all very sad about that for me. Anyway, these fries, which I get on my birthday and that's why they're called birthday fries, are loaded with meaty, cheesy topping goodness. So much in fact that you're probably gonna need a fork to attack these. You'll find them listed under the sides option on the menu, though some may argue they could be a small meal on their own if you choose not to share. Here's the thing though, I could completely derail this video and start talking endlessly about Animal Kingdom snacks for the remainder of our time today because there are a lot of really, really good ones. Animal Kingdom is a surprising treasure trove of food in a way that Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios really aren't. I know, fighting words, right? But anyway, that's not the main focus of this video. So what I'm gonna do is turn your attention to the dfbstore.com website. That's where you know we currently have that DFB Guide bundle deal that's gonna hook you up with all our guidebooks available right now, including the main DFB Guide to Disney World Dining and the Animal Kingdom Snack Guide as well. This bundle will help you save over 55% on your purchase of our guides, and you can save even more on top of that by applying code YouTube before checking out. I hope you like it. We work really, really hard on these books. I've been writing them since 2011. I think 2010 or 11 was the first year I wrote my giant DFB guide and you get lots and lots and lots of positive reviews and repeat buyers. So that's awesome. So I hope you like it too. Next up, chat with those animal experts. If you want to know more about the creatures roaming around Animal Kingdom, no need to Google it, just ask one of the animal experts on site. Animal care experts and cultural representatives hang around the animal trails as well as over at Rafiki's Planet Watch. So be sure to take some time to chat with the pros. Maybe have a few questions prepared for them ahead of time so your kids can interact with them as well. These are always some of my favorite memories in Animal Kingdom. Yes, I love riding the rides. Yes, I love eating the food, but talking to the cast members about the things that they're passionate about, which are these animals. I always learn so much and I walk out of there just having the best experience. Okay, psych, we're not done talking about Disney snacks. Zuri Sweets Shop is the confectionery location of Animal Kingdom, much like Main Street Confectionery and Big Top Treats are to Magic Kingdom. But unlike Magic Kingdom's confectionery locations, many of the treats you're gonna find at Zuri's are animal inspired and exclusive to this park. So instead of just a Mickey shaped dessert, you can pick up treats like monkey candy apples, hippo marshmallow pops, ice tiger sugar cookies, cheetah rice krispies, cotton top tamarind cake pops, 
Seriously, it's just as fun to look at this stuff in the display cases as it is to eat it. Okay, that's a stretch, but you get what I'm saying. Now, along with all the animal-inspired goodies, you can also pick up other unique sweet options too. Specialty cupcakes, scones, chocolate-covered fruit, a variety of fresh fudge, and my personal favorite, the haystacks, which are Kind of a combo of peanut butter, sugar, potato sticks, I don't even know. They are delicious, but you can only get them here. You know I talk about it all the time, Nomad Lounge. You're gonna wanna rope drop this particular spot. Now, Nomad Lounge is the best lounge in Disney World. You can sit inside on one of those comfy chairs or head outside to the covered patio with those amazing views of Discovery River. And while the vibes alone are enough to make me fall in love with this place, it also helps that the menu's filled with great options. For lounge bites, you can order stuff like the Tiffin's bread service, the Bangkok chicken wings, or the churros. The churros are so good, as you know. Now, as for the drinks, we got unique handcrafted cocktails like the Snow Leopard Salvation with vodka, pear liqueur, mint, lime juice, and ginger beer, the Tempting Tigress with bourbon, tamarind syrup, and lime juice, and the Night Monkey with rum, guava puree, coffee, simple syrup, lime juice, and a hint of cilantro. Super weird. Our team loves it. I don't want it, but maybe you will. <laughs> Now, much like most of the lounges on Disney property, aside from Oga's Cantina and Hollywood Studios and Space 220 and Epcot, Nomad Lounge does not take advanced dining reservations. But because this lounge is so popular, the walk-up wait list for it fills up quick. So I highly recommend jumping onto the wait list via the My Disney Experience app or in person over at the host stand just as soon as you're able to to make sure the list doesn't fill up before you get a chance to join. Also, note that Nomad Lounge usually opens later and closes earlier than the rest of Animal Kingdom. Currently, it looks like it's open from 10.30 to 6 daily, but make sure to double check the times on the My Disney Experience app before and during your visit. Now, if you want to experience a truly unique side of Animal Kingdom that most guests will never get the chance to see, you might want to add a private Animal Kingdom tour to your park day. Currently, there are four different VIP tours just in Animal Kingdom. Caring for Giants is an hour-long experience that gives you a closer look, and I mean a much closer look, at the African elephants on site. Don't forget that there's there's a brand new baby Koras there now, too. Up close with rhinos is basically the same thing as Caring for Giants, just replace elephants with rhinos. Savor the Savannah is an exclusive guided safari tour of Animal Kingdom's Harambe Wildlife Reserve, followed by African-inspired small plates, beer, and wine from a lovely private viewing area on the savanna itself. And the Wild Africa Trek is a three-hour tour of the Safi River Valley, an area of Animal Kingdom that typically goes unseen by guests. This tour also includes tastes of Africa and an array of small plates from a beautiful vantage point on the savanna after your trek. The tour or safari you choose will determine your price point, but keep in mind that these additional experiences will cost extra on top of your standard Animal Kingdom ticket. That being said, tours like Caring for Giants and Up Close with Rhinos are actually way cheaper than most Disney World VIP tours. Caring for Giants is just $39 per person, while Up Close with Rhinos costs $49 per person. What else can you do for that kind of money in Disney World? Now, hopefully Festival of the Lion King is already on your list of must-dos for your Animal Kingdom day. And if it's not, let's add it right now. Trust me on this. The music, the puppetry, the acrobatics, the costuming, you're gonna want to experience this one. But what's the best way to experience it? And are there seats in this theater that are better than others? Well, actually, yeah, there are. The show takes place in a circular theater surrounded by bleachers, kind of like a high school basketball court, and each area of bleachers around the theater is divided into four sections, warthog, lion, elephant, and giraffe. But what's more important than which section you're sitting in is what bleacher row you're in. You may feel like closer to the stage is going to be better for younger kids, but in reality, the way the bleachers are stacked will make viewing harder for kids who are closer to the front. For a clearer view for everyone in your party, head to the back bleachers. That way you'll be able to get an unobstructed view of the whole set. That said, if your kids want to maybe participate in the event, there are a couple of audience participation parts, then sit on the front row for sure, because then they can potentially be chosen to join the show. Festival of the Lion King plays every hour on the hour, starting at 10 a.m. and running until 6. But again, make sure you're checking on those show times via the My Disney Experience app to find out which performance you're going to want to attend that day. Next up is the VITI, very important toilet info. All right, it's your DFB friends once again giving you the most important Disney information out there, the bathroom information. Even with Animal Kingdom being a pretty chill park, that doesn't mean their bathrooms off the beaten paths don't get thick with lines and chaos. So let's track down the private restroom spots here so you don't find yourself standing in a giant line waiting for a stall to open up. Restaurantosaurus bathrooms. Okay, Dinoland USA has more than just cool dinos. They've got spacious bathrooms too, which I'm hoping is still the case after this whole area 
is rethemed into the tropical Americas, but that's a topic for another day. The restrooms inside Restaurantosaurus Quick Service tend to be less crowded and much larger than many of the others around the park. Finding Nemo, the big blue and beyond, the bathrooms tucked near the show building, by the way, this is another great show, tend to be totally deserted if and only if a show hasn't recently let out. So if you see crowds exiting the theater, don't swim against the stream to get to these bathrooms because they are no longer going to be the private potty oasis we promised. But if a show is in progress or everybody's going into the show, then these are going to be pretty empty. Here's a bonus one. Flight of passage mid queue. Now these restrooms aren't big or super private or even amazingly themed, but these are the only mid queue restrooms you're going to find in any of the Disney World parks right now. So if you're stuck in that big flight of passage line and your Night Blossom beverage has already run its course, if you know what I mean, take solace in knowing you don't have to completely leave that giant line to track down a restroom. Okay, you need to know how the new Lightning Lane service works. Lightning Lanes are going to be experiencing a lot of changes soon, and these changes are going to be impacting the way we navigate Animal Kingdom. We got a whole video out now talking in depth about what you can expect come July 24th when these new updates go live, but just to sum it up for you now, Basically, Lightning Lanes will soon give you the chance to pre-select three of your must-dos before your visit. Lightning Lanes will be broken up into two different categories, the multi-pass option, which is the new version of Genie Plus, and the single pass option, which is the new version of individual Lightning Lanes. Now, for the three other parks, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios, you're going to have to deal with a tier system when you book your multi-passes, meaning you'll only be able to pre-select one of those top tier category rides. But with Animal Kingdom, you don't have to worry about any tiers. You can just select any three attractions you want that are Lightning Lane multi-pass eligible. Here's the full list of multi-pass attractions you can choose from in Animal Kingdom. Now, to be perfectly honest, AK doesn't always need Lightning Lanes because on average, ride lines don't tend to be that bad unless you're visiting during a peak season time. But if you were to buy this service, I'd recommend skipping the pre-selections for the shows since you can usually get those at the last second anyways. Stick with the rides like Navi River Journey, Kilimanjaro Safaris, and Expedition Everest. So let's say you skip over the multi-pass purchase. Awesome, totally get that. But you may still want to use the money you saved on that multi-pass purchase for a different service instead. A Lightning Lane single pass for Flight of Passage. Flight of Passage is without a doubt the most popular attraction in Animal Kingdom. This immersive 3D flight simulation puts you on the back of your own Banshee and flies you across the colorful, fantastical world of Pandora. With that being said, waiting to get onto the attraction itself can be not so fantastical, with the wait times being astronomically high all the time. I'm not saying you can't wait for this one. There are parts of the queue that are neat and worth seeing in person at least once, especially that full-size avatar in that giant incubation tube, Hank in the Tank. But if saving time is the name of your game, then you'll probably want to purchase a single pass for this one ahead of your trip whenever that option's available for you. Just remember that time is money in Disney World, so if $13 to $14 per person is worth it for you to skip over a 60 to 90 plus minute wait and reclaim a good chunk of your park day, make sure you save for that ahead of time. Disney World hotel guests and guests of other select hotels will be able to purchase Lightning Lane passes for both multi and single passes starting at 7 a.m. seven days in advance of their first park day for their entire stay, up to 14 days. All other park guests may purchase Lightning Lane passes at 7 a.m. three days in advance of that first park day. Now, there is a good chance that the line for Flight of Passage will dwindle down toward the last hour of the day, but waiting until the last minute to ride this one can be a gamble, because if anything happens to the ride that forces it to go 101 for maintenance, there's a good chance it won't reopen and just remain closed until the next day, leaving you high and dry and banshee-less. Expedition Everest might have a lightning lane, but it also has a free third line option that could work just as well, if not better for you. That's the single rider queue. Single rider is only available for a limited amount of rides in Disney World, including the Expedition Everest coaster. Though single rider doesn't necessarily guarantee that you'll have a shorter wait, I will say that I personally have a 100% track record for Expedition Everest single rider line per the release of this video, which I definitely can't say when it comes to rock and roller coaster single rider line in Hollywood Studios. The only downside is that your group will be split up among different ride vehicles if you choose to try this method out. So if you're okay with riding solo, then you've got the possibility of shaving that extra time. But if you've got an already apprehensive kid in your group who's going to need someone's arm to squeeze when they find out that the Yeti has ripped apart the track, spoiler alert, then you'll probably just want to bite the bullet and wait the 20 to 30 minutes in the regular queue. Y'all already know I have big feelings about it's tough to be a bug, and you won't exactly see me cry in a river about it being replaced by Zootopia in the future. But what I do like about this attraction is its queue. 
so it's at least worth getting in line for. The show takes place inside the Tree of Life, and as you wait in line for the show, you'll get to see the Tree of Life from a whole new vantage point, with some intricate animal carvings that you would have never seen otherwise. Plus, the punny bug-themed musical posters inside the waiting area are pretty cute too. Can't help but appreciate a good play on movie titles like Beauty and the Bees, Website Story, The Dung and I, and Auntie. Oh, those Disney Imagineers. Now, you're gonna wanna meet the characters before it's too late. Animal Kingdom isn't just a place where you can meet a lot of different wildlife. You can also meet several of your favorite Disney characters here too. And better yet, many of those classic characters will be all suited up in cute safari attire or Dino Bash costumes. Much like anything inside the Disney bubble, you're gonna wanna check on those character meet and greet times via the My Disney Experience app, since character meet and greets tend to fully wrap up an hour or two before the end of the park day. But here's my big word of warning on that. Unlike rides, where you can normally jump in line right up until the park's official closing time and still be able to experience that ride just as long as you're standing in the queue before the line closes, cast members tend to close the meet and greet lines about 30 minutes before the characters will be heading out for the day. So for instance, if Mickey and Minnie are meeting and greeting guests over at Adventurer's Outpost until 6 p.m., get in line before five o'clock just to make sure you can see them before they have to go home and check on Pluto. I know I talk big game about bringing portable chargers to the park with you, but I've accidentally left my own portable chargers back in the hotel room before more times than I have fingers, and I have 10 of those. So there have definitely been times when I've had to resort to purchasing a fuel rod inside the parks, including Animal Kingdom too. Fuel rods are portable chargers for your electronics that can be purchased at kiosks all around Disney World. For 30 bucks, you'll receive a fully charged fuel rod, charging cables for various iPhone or micro USB Android devices, and a USB-C adapter, which is needed for some Android devices too. Fuel rods work like regular chargers to a certain extent. When your fuel rod dies, you can swap it out for another fully charged one at any of the fuel rod stations you come across. Inside Animal Kingdom, here are the areas where you can find fuel rod kiosks. Outside the Island Mercantile Gift Shop at Discovery Island, at the Dino Institute Shop in Dinoland, USA, way over yonder at the Conservation Station at Rafiki's Planet Watch, outside the Discovery Trading Company at Discovery Island, and over in the Shirkazong Bazaar in Asia. Don't worry if you forget about what I just told you though, there's not gonna be a fuel rod quiz or anything. You can find all of these fuel rod stations listed on the My Disney Experience app if your phone isn't already completely drained by that point. <laughs> just search fuel rod or phone charging in the My Disney Experience search engine and they'll all pop up up on the map for ya. The characters from Pixar's Up have a huge presence in Animal Kingdom and we are here for it. Not only can you join the Wilderness Explorers for free and earn badges around the park, which is gonna make Russell very proud of you, but you can also say hello to the Up characters in person. Kevin, for example, tends to wander around Discovery Island frequently and while she doesn't have an official meet and greet location, she sure isn't hard to miss when she's making her rounds. Russell, on the other hand, does occasionally pop into the Wilderness Explorers Clubhouse in Discovery Island to take pictures with new and old friends alike. And then there's Doug, who recently found his talking collar again, so he can say hi there to all his new friends whom he has just met but still loves. At the moment, Doug doesn't have any set character meet and greet times like Russell does, meaning you won't find him on the My Disney Experience app, but we'll keep checking on that in case it changes. Want to channel your inner mischievous side? Instead of standing on the bridge that overlooks a portion of Kali River Rapids and waving at passersby, be on the lookout for buttons. These buttons are gonna activate the surrounding elephant statues and cause them to spray water from their trunks as each group of guests floats on by. They'll never see it coming. Or maybe they will and they'll absolutely love it because they chose to go on a water ride in the first place. So there's a good chance that unless you're staying in the Animal Kingdom Lodge or at one of the other close-ish resorts like Coronado Springs or the All-Star Resorts, then Animal Kingdom might be the farthest park from where you're staying. So you're gonna have to factor in extra travel time for that. There's also no monorail line, no Skyliner route, and no boat waterways that'll get you to Animal Kingdom. So if you wanna take Disney's free transportation, you're only gonna be able to use the buses. Otherwise, you can drive here and park yourself or you can pay for a ride share or a taxi to drop you off and then pick you up. Parking at any of the Disney theme parks is free if you're staying as a guest at one of the Disney hotels or if you're an annual pass holder or a member of another affinity group that gets free parking. But if you've got a hotel room or Airbnb elsewhere and you're not part of an affinity group, the standard daily parking at the theme parks is $30 per vehicle per day. 
Got more questions about the must-dos of Animal Kingdom? Drop them in the comments so we can all help each other out. And don't forget to head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disney Genie Plus right now to pick up your free Disney Genie Plus cheat sheets. After all, it's one of the few cheat sheets in life you can download with zero guilt attached. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.